What's up you guys, Zach here with Dr. Eyeball MD. Today we're gonna go over the things you can become after you become an eye surgeon. Let's go. So today what we're gonna talk about is the different fellowships you can do, the different things you can become after becoming an ophthalmologist and completing an ophthalmology residency. So in order to become an ophthalmologist, you first have to finish your undergraduate degree, meaning four years of college. You then complete four years of medical school. After four years of medical school, you do one year of an intern year in either general medicine, surgery, pediatrics, or combined uh, transition year. And then after that year, you do three years of ophthalmology residency where you learn to work in the clinic, you learn surgery, and after that time, after those three years, you're basically a general ophthalmologist and you can take your boards and practice as a general ophthalmologist. But ophthalmologists are very particular people and so they've actually divided the specialty ophthalmology into about six or seven other subspecialties, uh, things that you can actually specialize in after becoming an ophthalmologist. So in this video, I'm gonna tell you about all the different subspecialties you can pursue after becoming a general ophthalmologist. So the easiest way to do this, maybe to think about working from the outside of the eyes in, uh, when we talk about the different subspecialties, because that's really how the specialties are divided, or divided on uh, the different parts of the eye and things you can specialize to treat different parts of the eye. So the easiest way to do this, maybe to think about working from the outside of the eyes in, uh, when we talk about the different subspecialties, because that's really how the specialties are divided or divided on uh, the different parts of the eye and things you can specialize to treat different parts of the eye. So number one is neuro-ophthalmology. What is neuro-ophthalmology? Well, it's essentially uh, an ophthalmologist who specializes in neurologic diseases of the eye and diseases of the brain and optic pathways that affect the eye. So some of the things a neuro-ophthalmologist might see and the things that they might uh, treat would be things like optic neuritis, uh, tumors that are associated with the optic nerves, optic nerve gliomas, like in neurofibromatosis. Uh, they treat things like pseudotumors, cerebri, um, things like that. And a lot of times uh, when ophthalmologists can't find anything wrong within the eye, but a patient still has vision loss and vision complaints, the neuro-ophthalmologist a lot of times becomes the end of the line and uh, where the patient gets sent to find other causes not within the eye, causes behind the eye, whether that be in the optic nerve or the brain to explain the vision loss. Now the cool thing about neuro-ophthalmology is, is that it's a very cerebral subspecialty. It requires a lot of thinking, uh, a lot of pontificating on disease processes. Um, the downside to it is, is that uh, you get less time in the OR and you have less uh, operations in the field of neuro-ophthalmology. So some of the things that neuro-ophthalmologists might do would be things like an optic nerve sheath fenestration for advanced pseudotumor. Um, they might do things like eye muscle surgery at, at times for patients with strabismus or XTs or ETs, that kind of thing. So those are the kind of things that neuro-ophthalmologists uh, might do. So it's basically a lot, it's not as much surgery, um, but it's a lot more of uh, systemic things and things that involve the, uh, the CNS disease that manifests in the eye. So number two, oculoplastic surgery. So an oculoplastic surgeon is essentially a plastic surgeon that focuses on the eyes and, the, and around the eyes, the eyelids and also the orbit. So it's an ophthalmologist, someone trained in general ophthalmology. They completed three years of ophthalmology residency uh, and then they go on and complete a fellowship in oculoplastic surgery, whether that be a one-year fellowship, a non-accredited uh, or non-ASOPers accredited fellowship that might be one years, or one year or a two year fellowship that's ASOPers accredited. So oculoplastic surgeons treat things from ptosis to dermatocolasis, droopy eyelids, they fix that. They do Botox for cosmetic reasons. Um, and they can also do bigger surgeries like orbital surgeries, like decompression surgeries for thyroid eye disease. Uh, they can treat and take out tumors around the eyes in the orbits. Uh, the extent of oculoplastics uh, can be um, from the cosmetic and aesthetic to the really advanced orbital surgeries. Um, for things like cancer and, and really big surgeries like that. So oculoplastic surgeries, especially the ASOPers accredited, is probably one of the hardest subspecialties to actually match into out of ophthalmology residency just because of how few spots there are and how sought after that uh, subspecialty really is. That being said, if it's something that you want to do coming out of ophthalmology, I think you should pursue it and not uh, let the competitiveness, competitiveness of that subspecialty deter you from trying to do it. One of the downsides to oculoplastics, and some of the oculoplastic surgeons I'm sure don't see this as a downside, but uh, you kind of abandon the intraocular surgery. You really don't uh, do cataract surgery all that often. You can, you can do combined, 
um, you know, general cataracts and then some plastics procedures, which a lot of ophthalmologists do, uh, some plastics in addition to their general practice. But the strictly uh, oculoplastics guys, a lot of times just abandon the intraocular surgery. Um, and you know, so you lose that part of, of ophthalmology, which, which kind of really seems like a core of ophthalmology. So it, it, it's a very divergent uh, pathway after ophthalmology. Number three, cornea. So the front part of the eye, the clear part is the cornea. Um, if you wear contact lenses, you know that the part that you put the contact on is your cornea. So you can actually specialize in just the cornea. Uh, so the cornea specialist treats things like dry eyes. They do corneal transplants for scars, keratoconus. They can do cross-linking. Um, they often do anterior segment surgery, like cataract surgery as well. And they can do refractive procedures uh, in addition to cataract surgery, like laser surgery, LASIK, PRK, that kind of thing. Uh, those are kind of the things that a cornea specialist might do. Next is a uh, uveitis um, fellowship and a uveitis specialist is something that's not as common and it's often combined a lot of times with a retina, uh, retina fellowship or becoming a retina specialist. So you can actually do fellowships in just uveitis. So the next specialty we have is glaucoma. So a glaucoma specialist is someone that treats uh, elevated pressure within the eye and treats the disease of glaucoma, which is damage to the optic nerve. Uh, they do things like manage with uh, drops and topical medications. They can do small procedures like mix procedures uh, that go along with cataract surgery. Um, and then they can also do larger procedures like tube shunts uh, and like Ahmed valves and Bayer valves and things like that to help control the pressure within the eye and prevent damage to the eye from glaucoma. That fellowship is one year long. Um, typically one of the um, not, not as strenuous of the, re of the fellowships that you can do as a glaucoma fellowship. Uh, and those typically aren't quite as difficult to get into in terms of fellowships after ophthalmology residency. Another fellowship you can do after ophthalmology residency is a pediatrics fellowship. So pediatrics uh, is simply just gonna be treating children, uh, eye disease of children, and you get a broad range of treating all kinds of eye disease. And especially you get a lot of practice in treating strabismus and doing strabismus surgeries. So uh, kids with eyes that are crossed or not aligned properly, you learn how to do muscle surgeries, eye muscle surgeries to correct that. And that's one of the big surgeries in pediatrics. And you can also do uh, cataract surgery, like pediatric cataracts, um, although that's a little less common, but you can do it. Um, and a pediatric fellowship is typically one year, and that's actually one of the easier fellowships to get in into uh, following ophthalmology residence. All right, the next fellowship is a retina fellowship. So there's two different types of retina fellowships that you can do. You can do a fellowship in retina medicine, which focuses on treating retinal eye diseases uh, from a medical standpoint and, and with using lasers. So doing a Bastens, a Lucentis, Ileas for things like age-related macular degeneration, diabetic retinopathy, other things like that, and then using lasers also to treat patients in the clinic. But a retina medicine specialist will not take patients to the OR. They typically refer to a surgical retina specialist. Uh, the retina medicine fellowship is typically one year long, um, as opposed to the retina uh, surgical fellowship, which is typically two years long. Uh, and a retina surgical fellowship is a little more of the tr more traditional route. Um, and that's one of the tougher fellowships to get into after ophthalmology residency. Um, but you'll get, you'll get trained in all the things that a retina medicine uh, fellowship trained specialist would, in addition to learning how to do the, the surgeries, like the vitrectomies, the membrane peels, uh, all the intraocular surgeries that go along with it. And so a lot of times the retina surgeons become kind of the, the end of the line thing for, for more complicated posterior uh, disease and things like drop lenses after cataract surgery. A little bit more obscure fellowships that can be done are things like an ocular oncology fellowship, which aren't as common, but they do have ocular oncology fellowships, uh, which is focusing on intraocular tumors and tumors associated with the eye. Uh, and those fellowships, I believe, are typically one year long. Um, and then another uh, less less well known and less well done uh, fellowship. Um, would be a uh, ocular trauma fellowship, which is pretty uncommon, but you can actually do those as well, focusing on things like ruptured globe repair and trauma to the eye and how to surgically repair those and get good at surgically repairing those. And some retina fellowships will have their chiefs stay on an extra year just to cover the ocular trauma. All right guys, so that's all the fellowships I can think of. I'm sure I left something out, but uh, basically after doing ophthalmology residency for three years, you can go on to become an uh, oculoplastic surgeon you can become a pediatric specialist, you can focus on glaucoma, focus on cornea, 
you can focus on uveitis, you can combine uveitis with retina, you can do just retina, whether that be retina medicine or a surgical retina fellowship, uh, you can do neuro-ophthalmology, and I think that's about it. Um, that's pretty much how we've, as ophthalmologists, have further subdivided such a tiny organ into even more subspecialties, uh, just taking parts of the eye uh, and then having people that get really good at treating that one particular part which if you're a patient, that's what you want is somebody who focuses on just that one problem uh, and is really good at it. All right guys, I know this is a quick video, but hopefully it was informative as to some of the options that you can pursue after ophthalmology residency and some of the fellowships that you can do to further subspecialize after becoming an ophthalmologist. Um, it's a very uh, um, kind of high level view. It's not in depth into any of these things. If you guys want, I can go into in depth uh, in-depth review of these fellowships, but this is just kind of to give you an overview of the possibilities after ophthalmology residency. All right guys, I hope you liked the video. I'm Zach with Dr. Eyeball MD. If you liked it, leave a like and subscribe to the channel and we'll be coming out with more videos. I'll see you next time.